Well, it's 7 o'clock, and so I'm going to call this forum to order. Good evening, and welcome to this evening's forum, where we will hear from candidates for North Mankato City Council and the Office of Mayor. There are 12 candidates for City Council whose names will appear on the ballot. From these, only two will be elected. There are two candidates for the Office of Mayor. Allow me to take a moment to ask that everyone silence their mobile phones. Maybe not their babies. Um, this forum is being recorded in its entirety and will be shown on Mankato's public access channel, KTV Channel 8. Anyone wishing to record tonight's forum on their mobile phone is asked to please move to the area occupied by members of the media so as not to block others' view or cause disruption. Thank you. And um, since there are some openings uh, around the room, if you simply move to a place where you will not block someone else's view if you raise your camera, that will be fine. My name is Edie Torstenson, and I will moderate this forum. My assistant is Mary Ann Scharf. We are members of the St. Peter Area League of Women Voters, which has planned and coordinated this event. The League thanks volunteer timers Best South, there, and Jake Sokolsky, as well as Kendra Sokolsky for her valuable help. We also thank South Central College for allowing us to use this conference center and the KTV crew for your service. Above all, we thank those uh, candidates who are present and you, the audience, for your participation. Thank you all. The League of Women Voters is a local, state, and national nonpartisan grassroots 501c3 organization. It promotes the active, informed involvement of citizens in the voting process. The League neither supports nor opposes political parties or individual candidates in any election. Tonight, I will present questions to the candidates <clears throat> excuse me, that address issues relevant to the upcoming election. Questions have been submitted online by the public and also formulated by the League based on its research. All questions are the property of the League of Women Voters. Due to the large number of candidates taking part in tonight's forum and the time needed for their answers and rebuttals, we will not take additional questions from the audience. However, please feel free to speak with the candidates after the forum, which will end at 8.30. Candidates for City Council are seated in alphabetical order in groups of five. You can see it's group A and group B. The mayor mayoral candidates are seated at a table across from me. Questions will be directed to one of these groups at a time. And each candidate in that group will have one minute to respond. Candidates in the remaining groups will each have 30 seconds for her or his rebuttal. In the interest of fairness, the order in which questions are answered and rebuttals made will be determined by me, the moderator, and will vary. I will call on you when your turn comes. Is that understood? Each candidate will have one minute to introduce themselves. Our timekeepers here at this table will mark the time holding up a yellow sign when 15, minutes, seconds have re, when 15 seconds remain and a stop sign when the time is up. Candidates are reminded to always look at the audience when speaking and to watch the timers. Upon completion of the question period, each candidate will have one minute for closing remarks. Now, beginning with Dr. Dan, try to say it right the first time, followed by Mr. Hagen, I call upon the candidates to introduce themselves. Dr. Dan. Good evening. Thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting the forum tonight. Um, and thank you to all the candidates that have um, expressed their interest and their courage to stand for the democratic election process for this upcoming election for the City Council of North Mankato. As mayor, I have been proud to represent and 
promote North Mankato and its quality of life for the last six years and have been happy to represent our citizens, our businesses, and our staff. I ran because I have a passion for helping people and am committed to seeing North Mankato continue to grow and prosper. I also wanted to continue to improve the relationships with Mankato and our other regional partners because I believe together we can have more success than what we had by ourselves. I am committed to North Mankato and, and dedicated to its progress and look forward to hopefully serving you again for the next two years. Mr. Hagan. Thank you. Again, thanks to the league and thank you for all coming tonight. I have deep roots in the city of North Mankato. I've lived here for over 45 years and like most of you, I spent the, most of my life building a career and pursuing a variety of interests. I only began to attend council meetings uh, three years ago when I was horrified about the city's initial approval of a six-story, 108-unit apartment complex as the first thing a visitor would see when they entered North Mankato. Terrible planning and a lack of vision, I thought. Thank God it was stopped with the leadership of Barb Church. I attended many council meetings since then trying to prevent future bad decision making. I proposed a, a citizen new building design committee, a Heritage Preservation Commission to prevent future building mistakes, but got no response. I also proposed a permanent citizens park board, a citizens rental permit and complaint board, and there has been no response and no discussion, public or private, of any of these proposals. I feel the council's misplaced spending priorities and citizen concerns being dismissed out of hand by the council uh, have convinced me that we need new citizen-centered leadership for the 21st century, and I hope to offer that leadership. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Amundsen? No. <laughs> my name is Craig Amundsen. I've lived in lower North Mankato all my life. Uh, I've seen some good things that have happened in the city. I've seen bad things that have happened for the city. Uh, I hope there will be more good things than bad, and I'm not a career politician. I'm just a regular guy on the street. Um, I'm very approachable. I can uh, balance a budget. I run a company uh, in Mankato. Um, that's what I've got. Thank you. Mr. Campbell. Hello, I'm Jeff Campbell, and I'd like to thank the women's organization for having us here and thank everybody for showing up. Uh, I've lived in North Mankato for 15 years and uh, originally came here from Indiana and I've commuted uh, for work most of the time outside of North Mankato. Uh, so as things kind of developed, I'm kind of settled in and was interested in getting a little more involved in the community. Uh, I enjoy North Mankato and really don't see uh, a whole lot of changes from, from where I'm at, but I wanted to help preserve what we have and uh, try to help improve uh, with things that I come uh, more informed with as I get into this process. Uh, so some of my uh, main uh, platform ideas are education and small business. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Durand. Oh, Ms. Church, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Just like everybody, I'll say thanks to the league. Thanks to all of you folks that came and those people that are going to be able to watch this um, at their leisure at home or wherever they choose. Um, for the last... Over four years, I've attended the North Mankato City Council, Port Authority, Planning Commission, intergovernmental meetings, as well as public input and study groups. At those meetings, I believe I've listened, I've studied issues, I've asked questions, and I've advocated for ideas that came either from me or from the public through me. Years ago, President Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for the country. And more recently, a wise woman talked to me about the concept of our civic duty. I'm running now with the hope that I can do something for our city, and I will fulfill my civic duty. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Durand. Stand and dress. Thank you. Uh, thank you, League of Women Voters. Thank you, candidates. 
those in attendance. I'm happy to be here. I grew up in this area and graduated from West High School. I did a year at MSU, and I graduated from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities with a degree in Spanish. I've used my language skills to teach and travel around the world. I've been to 35 different countries on six continents, but I've returned to North Mankato to get married recently and raise a family. If, I, if elected, I plan to use my experience abroad and my skills as a communicator to bring new ideas and discussion to the council. If elected, I'm going to work hard to protect our future and invest responsibly in projects that will pay dividends down the road. I believe it is imperative to the development of North Mankato that we have a city council which is transparent, engaging, and responsive to the community. Thank you. Um, I, I want to remind the um, candidates to hold the mic close to your mouths when you speak. Yes. I got a note from the back of the room and they're having a hard yes, time. Yes, I hope they can all hear me. Thank you. Thanks for everybody that, was, that came out tonight, and thanks to all the other candidates. Uh, my name is Matthias Lehrer. I'm a local designer, writer, and advocate. Uh, I live in Lower North Mankato uh, in a fixer-upper, which is kind of a disaster right now, but that's okay. Uh, I live there with my wife, Sarah, and we, we love it in Lower North Mankato. Uh, I decided to run because um, while the council certainly doesn't look a day over 30, any of them, there is a bit of an age gap, and I hope to bridge that gap and bring a little bit, di a little bit of a diversity of ideas um, to the council. Um, there are certainly issues that are facing my generation that are unique to, to my generation and the, um, <clears throat> the, the situation that we have moving forward, such as housing, um, the fiscal future of North Mankato, and demographic changes. I'd like to see some implementation of smart, smart growth tactics and uh, some hi historic preservation. You can check out all my stuff. I've got it all laid out on my website at MatthiasLiver.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. Hello, my name is Matt Peterson. Um, first off, thank you to the League of Women Voters and everyone for coming out on this nice chilly night um, to remind us that fall is officially here. Um, I have been a resident of North Mankato since about, I moved in 93 to Mankato and then moved to North Mankato in 95. So I'm going on 21 years. In that time, um, I got married, I've started to raise a family, I have three kids that'll continue uh, to be here, we want to stay in this community. And I thought after, um, about three years ago I ran, I, I thought about it about three years ago, ran, and uh, I was not able to attend this, but over the last three years I've been thinking about if I should do this again, and there's just a lot of things that I think um, I can have input in. Um, again, like Matthias said, uh, I believe that uh, interjecting some uh, different generations onto the council would be a good thing, and uh, I'm looking forward to providing uh, some insight and making sure my children have a great community to grow up in. Thank you. Mr. Shearman. Sanders. Sandersfeld. Oh, this. Name's Dennis Sandersfeld. I live in Lower North Mankato also, and um, I've had a chance to do a lot of traveling, like some of the others, and uh, had a travel agency, was in education, coaching, counseling, and business person the last uh, 30 years, and mainly with the travel, and I seen, always had an interest in city government, and it's really neat that you bring this up and show the council meetings and some of the workshops so we can all keep informed, and with the current and view magazine, or paper, that's great. Um, I'm glad to see there's a lot of interest in our local government and a lot of candidates here. I think that's really great. Thank you. Mr. Shearman. Thank you. Um, and thanks to everyone for being here. Um, I moved to North Mankato in 2003. Um, our family loves it here. I have a, a wife, Carla, a daughter, Heather, that's 12, and a son, Drew, that's one. I've sat on numerous boards um, throughout Mankato, uh, whether it be the Community Education Recreation Board, uh, the Mankato North Mankato Youth Football Board, uh, the Mankato Softball Area Softball Association, and I currently sit on the Region 9 Economic Planning Committee. Um, so I, I've 
position myself to become a candidate that's, that's best suited for this position. I'm running because I care about our community, um, but that's not any, diff any different than any of the candidates up here. I commend all you guys for running and taking the time away from your families. Uh, but I feel that um, there are three main issues that, that I, I want to focus on if I'm elected. Uh, obviously, it's the half percent sales tax and how we utilize those funds. Um, next is Commerce Drive and, and basically getting the commerce back on Commerce Drive and then just further economic development. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Steiner. Thank you very much. Thanks all for being here. I decided to run for a sixth term on the council because in, I think uh, 20 years of experience is a valuable asset to the city and the citizens. And understanding the process and how government works is a, extremely important. During my 20 years in the council, much has been accomplished, including uh, building the North Mankato Taylor Library, the new police annex and community room, fire station number two and community room. Uh, the Caswell Park has been developed and now the Caswell soccer facility and both these are true regional and city, or nationwide gems for uh, youth activities. Uh, we've developed Benson Park which continues to be a work in process, progress and we've also uh, worked on Bluff Park and we're continuing to work on beautiful Spring Lake Park to keep our park facilities going. We've worked uh, to help create the Miracle League field and just yesterday it was announced that uh, the Mankato Area Foundation gave a great grant to uh, uh, help with the playground at the Fallenstein uh, playground. We developed the recycling center and we've also worked very closely with uh, Business on Belgrade Association which has proved to be a very valuable asset to North Mankato. Thank you. Mr. Whitlock. Thank you everyone for coming out here tonight. <coughs> I'm, uh, <coughs> excuse my voice. I'm married to my lovely wife, Karen, and I'm the proud father of Miles and Matthew. I'm the owner of Brick House Graphics since 1985. I'm the executive director of the Business on Belgrade Association. I'm a, a member of the City Center Partnership Board of Governors. I'm the chairperson for the City Center Partnership, the Bu Business Development and Retention Committee. I was the 2015 recipient of the Greater Mankato Growth and City Center Partnership Volunteer of the Year Award. I served on the North Mankato Planning Commission from 2000 to 2003. I stepped aside from the Planning Commission um, to uh, uh, create and direct the Business on Belgrade Association. After 14 years, we have produced six quality of life events. Booking on Belgrade, Blues on Belgrade, Beer on Belgrade, Bells on Belgrade, Anthony Ford Pond Hockey, and the Bumpers on Belgrade. Thank you. Thank you, you Mr. Whitlock. Uh, two other candidates, Isaac Carey and Brian Lamb, are not present this evening. Both are running for council. Now we will begin the question portion of the forum. The first question was submitted online by a member of the public. Each and every candidate will have one minute to answer. All of you will have one minute. I will call upon you. There will be no time for rebuttals. And here is the question. In what ways do you feel it would be appropriate to improve the process by which public input and engagement on such issues as the rental cap is solicited, respected, and integrated into the work of city government? We will begin with Mr. Dehan, followed by Mr. Hagen, and then Ms. Church. Mr. Dehan. In the last uh, six years, we, the city has gone to some great length to increase the transparency of government. We have um, come out with a weekly e-newsletter in addition to our monthly stuffers and our biannual um, newsletter. We have social media platforms that we are utilizing. We've had the um, brewing ideas um, formats. We continue to hold public hearings on all such questions, um, both at the council chamber and then with outreach into the community um, with directed um, invi invitations to those that are most, in, most um, involved in a specific issue. So we've tried a great deal to be as transparent as we can. In addition to that, um, the council is always amenable to calls, emails, however other people would like to contact us um, with uh, meetings at church or at the grocery store. Um, I also restored the, uh, 
the Coffee with the Council, which meets monthly, as an informal opportunity for people to have input with the Council. Thank you. Mr. Hagan. I attended both of the sessions that the city set up dealing with the issue of the 10% rental rule. Uh, you can find the details of those meetings at my website, tomhagan.us. But just to put this in some perspective, uh, 40 people showed up at the meetings. Uh, we attempted to make some changes in what the city had proposed. It appeared that the city had come up with a proposal of the 10% cap on their own with no input from citizens at all until these meetings were held. And at that point, we were supposed to tweak the results. Uh, the people who present were very unhappy at both sessions. Uh, the city administrator uh, indicated that we had hijacked the meeting, which seems to mean a little strange when you're simply coming to express your views. Then 40 people showed up at the council session, some of them speaking very eloquently about this issue. Uh, they were dismissed, essentially. No comment was made as to what they brought forward, and in the end, the council voted to approve the 10% cap. It's indicative of the way that this council has tended to handle citizen input and citizen uh, participation. Thank you. Ms. Church. Ah, I, I also went to uh, one, the first one of the rental cap meetings. And with all due respect to trying to get people to uh, engage with, this, with the city council. Um, I too have experienced and witnessed uh, dismissiveness from uh, the staff and the council people. And um, I think we need to look at more creative ways and uh, encourage people, not discourage them from coming. Uh, don't limit them to three minutes to tell you their ideas um, and then uh, be done with them. Um, don't just count on the uh, website. There are a lot of people that need to get information other ways. So I think we just need to be better stewards and uh, more inviting to the public. Thank you. Thank you. We will continue with Mr. Sandersfeld, Mr. Whitlock, and Mr. Lyer. Uh, we'll begin with Mr. Sandersfeld. Um. I think uh, government's role is to make regulations and sometimes like uh, mall people or associate, uh, associations with uh, rental that uh, you got to watch how many regulations we put down because uh, uh, you have to enforce those regulations so if you pinpoint it too tightly that you could be asking for trouble like the 10% on there but uh, I think we've done good research with our workshops and uh, getting some information out to the people about this. But um, I think on each of these issues that are up there, we have to spend a lot of time. And I never had the time before, but thank goodness that uh, I'm retired now so I can spend a lot of time dealing with each of these issues. Thank you. Mr. Lyer. Um, I think a good way that we could engage the public better uh, is through wards. Right now, all of North Mankato is at large, which means you have to convince the whole city to vote for you if you want to take a position on the council. I don't think that's how it should be. Uh, similar sized cities don't have that. Mankato doesn't have that. Um, so if we were to break North Mankato into wards, then we would have proper representation of where people live, and they could go and talk to their constituent. Right now, it could be after this election that we would flip completely to a council controlled by um, Upper North, and likewise in the future we could flip to a council completely tro controlled by Upper North. But on the 10% rule, I agree, I was at both of those, those meetings, there has to be better headway. They put a moratorium in place for the rental properties one year, for one year before they voted on it, and they couldn't bother to engage the public until four weeks before they decided to vote on it. That's not the way it should be. We should engage the public first, see what they have to say, and then make our decisions. Thank you, and I, I apologize, Mr. Whitlock. You, you can speak now. I missed you in order. Well, I think the uh, rental density cap for the city of North Mankato is probably one of the best things that we've ever done down here. What it shows is that we care about our neighborhoods. I live in Lower North Mankato. I chose to live down there, raise our family down there. Um, 
I've got rental across the street from me. I've got it to the left of me, to the right of me, behind me. I'm stuck in the middle with, the, uh, with rentals all around us. Thank God I've got a, an apartment complex that's next door to me. I think these people keep their property a lot better than I do, but there's some across the street don't. Some behind us don't. So I think it's one of the best things. It shows that we care about it. And Mankato does have a rental density. They are 25%. Uh, get up around the college area. That's all 25% density of rental housing up there. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Mr. Steiner, Mr. Campbell, and Mr. Shearman. Mr. Steiner. Uh, I, too, live in lower north Mankato, and the overwhelming response that I got from the citizens was, we need a rental density camp. We live down there. We know, we know how it is. Uh, we spent a lot of time on this. We had, a, we had a professional survey done by Bolton and Mank, and we listen to a lot of people. We listen to people in the public meetings. We listen to people at our meetings where we have two open portions of each meeting. And we, if we listen to all sides, and perhaps in the end, if we choose to disagree, we choose to disagree. Uh, we, we have to do what we have to think is right. Right. And Mr. Campbell? Hello. Uh, I do live in Upper North Mankato, and new to this whole process, uh, I can't say that I have a lot of experience in what some of the frustrations are, um, but as some of the council uh, candidates had mentioned, uh, I do feel that it's important to listen to the people and bring that forward and hopefully um, be the voice uh, for the group versus uh, individuals. Um, the other side of that is um, as we take a look at, uh, let me grab my thing. Uh, one of the things that I have done is attended a few of the council meetings and there has seemed to be uh, reoccurring viewpoints on transparency. So I think that's important to bring to the council is if that is uh, an issue um, to make that more transparent so that everybody has an opportunity to um, place their voice. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Shearman. Well, I just want to speak on um, just the, the, the first part of the question is just getting people involved and you know I encourage people to, to attend meetings and, and learn as much as possible and, and if, if they're not attending meetings at least watch them and, and kind of know what the issues are. I do think uh, the way that we've done in the past, you know, sending out surveys and to get the kind of the information out and get opinions from um, our constituents is, is something that's really positive. Um, I, I don't think it's beneficial to to say to the people that want to come to meetings to say they've hijacked it. Uh, that could be a, a bit of a discouraging uh, remark to have people attend your meeting. So um, we have to treat those people with respect. Um, and as far as the rental issue goes, uh, I, th I think. It's important that we have sound data behind the decisions we make as a council. Um, and it sounds like that they did. Um, but if it is a hot button issue to where you have a large portion of our community coming to the meetings and, and, and disagreeing or, or having things to say about that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to table those issues and, and, and speak about them um, later. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, it will be Mr. Amundsen, Mr. Peterson, and Mr. Durand. We'll begin with you, Mr. Amundsen. I think that the uh, uh, rental uh, moratorium that they had for that year gave us a time to reflect on how many pieces of property are out there. Um, I actually live right next to rental property. There's three of them right on my block. As they say, some of it said some of them been good, some of them been bad. Um, the need for having a cap on rental property, I think, was needed. I think it's something that will also help in property values that people have as homeowners and absentee uh, uh, landlords don't keep their property as well as people that do own their property. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to jump back on track here. I think the question talked about public meetings and process and stuff like that, and it kind of went all the way on rental here for a long time. Um, but to answer the question, um, 
I'm, I'm up here talking and, and, be, and want to be here to work for the public, to listen to what they have to say, uh, whether it's right or wrong. The key word there is to listen. Um, I don't think the current council really respects uh, the public views a lot. I think it's kind of hard to come to a meeting and stand up and, and talk uh, just because of some of the things that have happened lately. Um, I believe we wait till the last minute on a lot of things and just kind of put it out there and, and try to get it through without the public paying attention a lot, to be honest with you. Um, so I just think we just need to listen to the people and, and respect the people is the big thing. We're here uh, for you guys, um, not our own agendas. And sometimes what the people want is going to be totally wrong. <laughs> and that's great, but we got to show the, the respect that it deserves. And Mr. Durand? Thank you. <clears throat> Well, I would, uh, I would agree with Matt, excuse me. I'd agree with Matt. Uh, I believe that the council that we have currently is a little less responsive than most of us would appreciate. Um, I think that the website, uh, although helpful and informative, uh, maybe falls a little short of actually inviting uh, participation at the council meetings. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult as a citizen to walk into a council meeting, uh, voice your opinion on certain matters, and then just feel like the council is dismissive or, you know, is playing this waiting game where you, you, uh, you'll show up, you, the, the time you show up or you don't show up is the time that they pass any issue that you're, uh, that you're concerned about. So I would encourage council members like myself uh, to knock on doors and talk to the community and just see where people stand in general and I've been doing that as I run for council. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go on to uh, question number two. If passed, what principles would you use to prior prioritize expenditures of the local tax extension funds? In this round, Group A will have one minute each to respond, and Group B and mayors will respond, will give rebuttals of 30 seconds. We will be begin with a one minute response from Ms. Church, followed by Mr. Durand. So let me be clear the question is how would you prioritize spending if the uh, sales tax extension is passed? Correct. Okay. That is correct. Um, so the public decides that that is what they would like to do. I think the first thing you need to do is look at the debt you already have uh, that will need to be paid. Uh, another three million dollars over the six million that uh, of sales tax that we'll collect. It'll cost us an additional three million. So um, I would first of all have to say, how are we going to? Spend when are we going to start spending any money? Are we going to collect sales tax and then spend it? Or are we going to take projects and, and start bonding and spending as fast as we can? Um, I also think the first thing is look at your needs and then worry about your wants. If there's anything left over, just like your home budget, you get to do the wants. Thank you. And now, Mr. Durand. Can you repeat the question one more time? Sure. If passed, what principles would you use to prioritize expenditures of the local tax extension funds? Thank you. So I've been uh, just doing a little looking at the current council's method of uh, prioritizing uh, projects that they'd like to use on this local option sales tax. Um, <clears throat> L-O-S-T, local option sales tax. And I kind of feel like uh, the methods that they have are a little bit skewed towards what maybe they think they want to do as a council and a little less on how much are things costing us? What, what is the cost of the, of the project? So this point system, and you can look it up, it's, it's pretty convoluted in my opinion, and it has a rank one through five, you add a five point for, you know, whether you think the project is feasible. You add five points whether you think the community needs it. You add five points, you know, 
and, the, and then the council uses this point system to try and, and figure out how they're, gonna, how they're gonna go ahead with the projects. Well, I think that there needs to be a little more emphasis on fiscal responsibility when it comes to evaluating this point system. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Mr. Lyer. Um, as far as the local option sales tax is concerned, I think it goes without saying that we need to put needs over wants. We don't want the river busting over into North Mankato because we didn't fix the, the levee wall. Um, I would say that also we should probably collect the tax as it comes in and not bond up front. Like Barb said, we're paying a lot more in interest on um, the, the bond that we took out for the last lo local option sales tax than uh, we would if we would have just uh, collected as it came in. But more importantly, I would say that the long-term sustainability financially of these projects is of utmost importance. You know, we're talking about building an indoor uh, recreation complex. Who's going to pay for the roof in 15 years when that thing goes sour, if it does? Or the pl when the plumbing breaks? Or the electricity? You know, these are all things that, while we can put a cognitive dissonance to right away. We can bond up front, say we got the cash, we put it down, and then my generation is stuck paying for it later on. And that's not something that I really want to stick on me, personally, as a homeowner, or anybody else in my generation. Thank you. Mr. Amundsen? I think it's a, uh, a prior taste as a need rather than a want. Um, Mr. Amundsen, can I ask you to raise the mic closer to your mouth? As a priority, as a, as a need, more than a want. Um, everything has a cost. Um, you have to make sure that you can uh, sustain that cost in order to get things built and maintain them. Because if you don't maintain them, there's there's nothing there. I mean, it just, it just goes downhill. Um, I'm not a career pro politician. I hope to bring new ideas to try and uh, pay for things as far as uh, maintaining what's there. Thank you. Mr. Campbell. Uh, I guess I'd like to ease some of the, the doom and gloom uh, of what's been presented. Uh, I feel a little bit different. Uh, I'm the same as far as the wants versus needs. Um, I like having a surplus, um, like making uh, good decisions with how we go about spending our money. And hopefully we can get everyone here and in the community involved in really what those things uh, are. Um, but from a personal aspect, one of the things that kind of drew me to this was uh, through 2008, um, I was without employment. And I thought that the diversity of uh, the jobs that were around our community helped people kind of sustain and be able to keep things moving. Um, I felt little impact as I thought the community did. So I'd like to continue with that mindset uh, kind of moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Now the mayoral, mayoral candidates and Group B have 30 seconds each to offer their views. We begin with Mr. Shearman followed by Mr. Steiner. Mr. Shearman. Thank you. Um, I First, I think we need transparency, obviously. Um, I think the public um, deserves that and just to know exactly what we plan to spend those funds on. Um, but there, you know, and, and obviously we, we need to meet our needs and, and the levy is a concern and getting that fixed. However, I'd, I'd prioritize based on what helps the greatest amount of people in our community. Um, why not an indoor sports facility? Our, the average age of, of a person in North Mankato is 36 years old which means he has a family, um, that, and that would go uh, pretty far in the use as far as you know those families go. Thank you. Thank you. And now Mr. Steiner. Thank you. I want to em emphasize that the uh, local option sales tax is a continuation of the current tax which we are already uh, utilizing. Uh, the money would go to infrastructure, public works, 
and the wastewater treatment plants and flood control projects in conjunction with Mankato, and also for recreation, athletic facilities possibly, and parks and downtown development. So. Thank you very much. Now we have a follow-up question. Please, each of you, oh, I'm sorry, if I, oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I've, yeah. Okay, Mr. Whitlock. Well, I just have to uh, kind of uh, uh, emphasize, I guess, what uh, Councilman Steiner said about this. This is not a new tax. That's one thing that people are, have a, a misconception about. This is not a new tax. What that, the legislature uh, dictates, what there are certain items that can be used and cannot be used for the uh, money that's coming off this tax. It basically, it's flood protections, infrastructure, recreation, and parks, and sports complexes. Thank you. Mr. Peterson? Um, back to the question about the principles of how you'd go about it, uh, I think it's pretty simple. Uh, we gotta be fiscally responsible. Um, I think some of the things we gotta look at is what actually is gonna add to the quality of life of the residents. Uh, what's gonna keep people here, what's gonna attract new people, new businesses, and we just have to, again, be transparent, invite the public to give their opinions on the thing instead of always being so general about infrastructure or this or that, let's actually talk about what, want, what we wanna do ask the input, and make the best decision that's going to increase quality of life. Mr. Sandersfeld. I like the sales tax compared to the income tax and some of the others. I think it's fairly fair, and that extension would help. I know there's a lot of wants, and we've got to handle those first. And uh, we have beautiful parks and recreational things, but it'd be exciting trying to deal with uh, added things that would be uh, need. Uh, Dr. Dehan. Um, again, this is a, an extension of the existing tax. It will generate roughly $5 million per year, half from visitors. So we do not have to raise local property taxes to, do, to fund these projects. The projects will be prioritized on, on needs and wants, and the uh, public will have an opportunity to comment on these. Um, any dollars that are spent will be um, the last dollars in on a project, requiring that projects have um, partners and have operating budgets that will sustain them into the future. Um, and the best part is it gives us local control over how those dollars are spent at the citizen level. Mr. Hagan. So the question is, how do we decide? Uh, as it stands now, the council will make those decisions. You'll have your three minutes in front of a council to question that decision, and then the project will go forward. I would suggest you look at the decisions the council made in the last year to see what kind of decisions they might make in the future. A $574,000 parking lot in downtown North Mankato that businesses do not contribute to, and a million dollar bike trail to nowhere. Uh, that doesn't bode well for the future use of the funds that might come in in this $15 million uh, tax. Uh, Thank you. Now there'll be a follow-up question. Please, each of you, respond with a simple yes or no. And here is the question. We'll begin, uh, your answers will begin with Mr. Dr. Dean. Would you support using tax dollars to purchase the Chol property and create a park? Yes or no? Tax dollars? No. Mr. Hagen? Yes. Mr. Amundsen? No. Mr. Campbell? No. Ms. Church? Yes. Mr. Duran? Yes. 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 No. No. Thank you. That was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got their mic back at the right table. <laughs> okay. Now I'll move on to question number three. What is the role of the city in promoting adequate and affordable housing for all segments of the community? Each of you in group B has one minute in which to answer. We will begin with Mr. Steiner, followed by Mr. Whitlock, and then Mr. Peterson, Mr. Sandersfeld, and Mr. Shearman. 
So we begin with Mr. Steiner. Well, we have to make sure that there, there will be housing available for all those that need it. It comes from, uh, also from the private sector, people developing their, their projects to allow for this housing to come about. And we have to make it possible for that to happen. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Whitlock. Uh, thank you. Uh, affordable housing, it's, a, it's really a hot topic. We need to have it. We're bringing people into this town that uh, um, uh, are working uh, uh, jobs that uh, are, uh, uh, they're making minimum wage on it, and we have to have some place for them. We've got about a 3% unemployment in this uh, community right now. But what we have to do is we have to provide uh, for the people that are coming into this town. We've got uh, 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 a lot of uh, economic growth that's going on, especially on the other side of the river. But that does affect us immensely over here on this side. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. Um, we need to make sure that uh, we're doing everything we can to uh, work with the people that are willing to develop that land. Um, can, you know, have a little bit of, of say and, and not just jump to the first project or the first developer that uh, wants to buy a piece of land, but really put some thought into it. Uh, make sure that uh, we're not setting, um, setting the city up to fail or to take over a bunch of lots and land and tax liability because all of a sudden no one wants to buy those houses or those lands the land that is there. So I just think that uh, um, we, we just got to work hand in hand with the developer and be honest and open and, and explore the, the avenues and not set ourselves up to fail. Um, there's been some past projects that have not worked out and uh, we've, we've had some burden. Thanks. Thank you very much. And Mr. Shearman. Oh yeah, I agree. I think, I think um, the council can play a big role in this, um, and that includes uh, providing assisted living facilities. Uh, our baby boomers are, are coming of age to where they're going to be uh, needed some assisted living facilities. Um, there are waiting lists uh, for people to get into, um, so those, that's an issue for us. Uh, but also, um, for the lower income housing, um, we should be being creative with our zoning um, and make sure that we're not just putting that type of housing just anywhere. Um, thank you. And Mr. Sandersfeld. Yeah, we have to provide for those people, uh, but we also have to have regulations because we have a beautiful city here. Everybody seems to keep up their properties, so you have to have regulations of if you bring them in that they also keep up their property. Thank you. 30-second rebuttals will now be heard from the mayoral candidates and Group A, beginning with Dr. Dean, followed by Mr. Hagen. Um, the city is working hard to come up with strategies to increase workforce housing. Um, we're looking at the tools we have from uh, adopting city code to accommodate it, um, using TIF dollars, tax increment financing dollars, and working with developers to take on those opportunities. Um, we're also looking for additional partners, um, but we did not want to have all of it turn into single family homes converting into rental properties in Lower North, which was part of the problem with the, uh, with the rental density that we were discussing earlier. Low income folks are not going to be buying houses, they're going to be renting. And the 10% cap that we placed on rentals already diminishes the amount of material that's available. A bad owner is always worse than a bad renter because you can remove the bad renter, but you can't remove the bad owner. What we need is regulation, careful, thoughtful, citizen-directed regulation of our rental properties that encourage people to live in our communities, in our rental units, and keep them up and keep them so that they fit in the neighborhood. Uh, simply putting a 10% cap on changes nothing. If you've got a bad renter across the street, you've still got a bad renter. Now, Mr. Durand, followed by Mr. Lyer, Mr. Amundsen, Mr. Campbell, and Ms. Church. Um, we'll begin with Mr. Durand. Thank you. Uh, I believe it is very important to have low-income housing, uh, not only for the people who are here already, but for those that may be coming. Um, North Mankato is changing. I think the diversity that we're seeing uh, 
influx into North Mankato is a positive thing. I think it can help our community. And I would agree with uh, Mr. Peterson saying that we need to work closely with developers if that's a type of unit that is uh, responsible to build. And um, it just needs to be something that we're all proud of. Thank you. Mr. Lyer? Well, Mr. Shearman hit the nail on the head. Zoning and land use are our biggest problems. Um, in Upper North Mankato, if you want to build a new house, you have to build it on a 75-foot lot for no reason. There's absolutely no reason that that rule exists, but it does. We are at the lowest home ownership rate since 1965. That's 50 years. So we definitely need to look at how, not necessarily low income, but just simple affordable housing. Um, you, you can build a house in Lower North on a 40-foot lot. That's what they're all built on, but it's not the same for Upper North. Uh, we need to pull back the regulations and allow for different housing types like accessory dwelling units and row houses. Thank you. Mr. Amundsen. It's the low-income uh, housing, I think we need to do something for affordable housing, and I have no problem with it upper or lower north, uh, as long as it stays within the 10% cap. You can't put everybody into the same area. You have to spread it out throughout the whole city. Uh, otherwise, you run into some issues. Um, you have to do something with, or not do something, but uh, accommodate the people that are coming into the town to work. Thank you. Mr. Campbell. I would agree that uh, we need to do something for affordable housing, um, although I would have to get a little more input by a lot of the community that would be mostly affected by it to really come to a conclusion that would benefit the community. Thanks. And Ms. Church. Okay, I think that uh, one of the things we should do is stop tearing down uh, affordable uh, homes in Lower North Mankato in this, to, as a sacrifice to economic development. Those are the affordable homes in North Mankato. Uh, we can make, uh, make things attractive to developers to develop this kind of, of housing, and we need to have it, as somebody said, spread around the town. Uh, in the olden days, you know, there was business, personal, big housing. All together, we did it. Thank you very much, all of you. Now to question number four. What are your thoughts on participating in regional partnerships? Mr. Hagen, we will begin with you, and then Dr. Dean. You each have one minute to respond. The more regional partnerships you can engage in, the better for a community. We should be buying supplies together with other cities. Uh, particularly, Nicollet County needs to work together with other communities. Uh, I don't see the kind of relationship being built with St. Peter, for example, uh, with uh, some of the other surrounding communities that we might be able to uh, leverage into some help. We can look to those cities for examples of how things work there that we might apply to our own cities. Uh, certainly, we need to work better with the Nicollet County commissioners. Uh, to uh, uh, provide services uh, that cross the entire county lines. And, of course, there's the issue of Mankato. Uh, there's many times a discussion about joining with Mankato. Uh, I think that we do very well as an independent community, but there are things that we can share with, with Mankato, uh, I think, to a greater extent. Dr. Dean? Um, North Mankato and Mankato already have, and as does Nicollet County, we have mutual aid agreements um, for fire, police, all those types of things, emergency management services. Um, we have been doing cooperative buying with Nicollet County since I became mayor. We've bought a number of pieces of equipment that we now commonly share. We um, do purchasing through um, the city of Mankato or with the city of Mankato with the school district on various things. Um, we have the recycling center that North Mankato hosts, but it is a joint project with Nicollet County that we're already doing. Um, we work um, cooperatively with the Highway 14 partnership, which stretches from, from New Ulm to Rochester to try and, for, uh, and get that highway completed. So we continue to work collaboratively with a lot of groups. Um, <clears throat> I meet monthly with all the college presidents, 
the, uh, the school district, the business organization, the city of Mankato, our two administrators, um, and have come up with um, ideas like the Tapestry Project and the Diversity Council, which are collaborative opportunities that we have worked on as cities. Thank you. 30-second rebuttals will now be heard from groups A and B, beginning with Mr. Lyer, followed by Mr. Amundsen. Thank you. Uh, we are a metropolitan area. We're encroaching 100,000 people, or maybe we're over 100,000 people. Um, we need to work with Mankato and St. Peter uh, on, a, on a wide variety of issues. There are plenty that, that we can work together on. Um, but we must not sacrifice our autonomy as a city. We, the citizens of North Mankato, are the only people that should be allowed to determine the fate of North Mankato. Now, with that being said, we are stronger together, so we should look to work, but we need to maintain our autonomy. Thank you. Mr. Amundsen? Working with uh, regional partnerships for equipment, I think, is a great deal. It cuts cost. It also uh, cuts the overhead. Um, it also helps form bonds with the towns around you to help out in times of need and also in things that we may see that we need in the future. Um, it's the best thing to do, I think. Thank you. Thank you. We will be hearing next from Mr. Campbell, followed by Ms. Church and Mr. Durand. Mr. Campbell. You know, there's no doubt that uh, this is the right thing to do. Uh, I think some opportunity um, even a side of that is where the uh, council and other communities are working together, uh, maybe incorporate some of the businesses that they're intertwined with uh, to go along those lines as well to help the community on both sides. Thank you. Ms. Church. I think it would be absolutely foolish of anybody to say partnerships with um, our close neighbors it would be not a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. I think the council could do better in informing the public of all the partnerships um, during council meetings. And last but not least, they're talking about local partnerships or regional partnerships uh, with sales tax extensions, but there's no partners, governmental partners, except Mankato and North Mankato. Thank you. Mr. Durand. Thank you. Uh, of course, I would love to continue to um, share in the partnerships that we have regionally. Um, Nicollet County, of course, Mankato, of course. I think that's pretty common sense. Um, I think we run into problems with some of that partnership when uh, we get into this tax incremental financing and we sort of have a race to the bottom. This is a, a program where we offer businesses to come in and develop, but really, who are we competing against when we do that? I feel like we're competing against our neighbors, and uh, I don't know if that's exactly a great partnership to have. So I would be you know, in favor of working with our Thank neighbors, you. and I think we do that. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll be hearing from Mr. Whitlock, Mr. Peterson, Sandersfeld, Shearman, and Steiner. Mr. Whitlock. Thank you very much. Uh, the regional partnership, uh, we already have what we have with Public Safety Fire Department. Uh, St. Peter is our county seat. Uh, Mankato is closer to us. Um, we already partner with uh, Mankato on quality of life events uh, through the uh, City Center Partnership, which I'm a member of the board. There's an old saying, uh, you can always have a good neighbor, but have a beer over your back fence with your back neighbor, with your uh, next door neighbor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. Yeah, um, we are involved in many partnerships, as Mr. Dean uh, alluded to, um, more than probably most of us up here know about, uh, which is a great thing. Uh, we'd be foolish to, to not have that. Uh, but to me, it's pretty uh, simple. We just need to make sure we're not swallowed up. Um, I'm here because I want to be in North Mankato. I want to have an identity of North Mankato. Um, so we just got to be cautious in what we do and, and make sure that uh, we don't get swallowed up someday. Mr. Sandersfeld? Yeah, I agree with that uh, statement that 
Uh, we have the law enforcement combined to some extent, uh, fire department, we have volunteer, they have paid across the river, but we can uh, share our equipment and do a lot more together. And I think at one time it was mint school, there was nothing done. Uh, now I'm seeing that there is some movement of uh, cooperation between the entities. Thank you. Mr. Shearman. Yeah, obviously, it's a great idea to, to keep those partnerships going and, and look for new ones. Um, we talk about this all the time in, the, in Region 9, um, creative ways to kind of um, build your economic development through partnerships. Uh, it creates economies of scale. Um, you get more use out of facilities. Uh, when you partner with different, different regions, uh, you pull your resources. Um, you also get new creative ideas from different perspectives, you know, similar towns doing the same things. Or, or doing things that maybe we want to do. So, um, for example, the ASA is a great example. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Steiner. I've always been an advocate of North Mankato maintaining its autonomy, as Matt was saying earlier, so we don't get swallowed up. But we do have some absolutely necessary things that we share with the mutual aid with Mankato, fire, police, emergency, the, the River Valley drug, uh, drug, force, drug Task Force, and we share some equipment with Nicollet County as well. So these are valuable partnerships, but again, it's very important for North Mankato to maintain our autonomy and remember who we are. Thank you very much, all of you. Now I'll, um, I'll give you the fifth and last questions for tonight. According to an article in last Sunday's Minneapolis Star Tribune, and I quote, stagnant wages are among the several challenges in attracting and keeping talent in the Mankato area. What steps would you take to keep talented people in our area and to attract young people? Group A will have the first chance to respond. You have one minute each. It will be Mr. Amundsen, followed by Mr. Campbell, then Ms. Church, Mr. Durand, and Mr. Lyre. We'll begin with Mr. Amundsen. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Uh, this is from the Star Tribune. Stagnant wages are among the several challenges in attracting and keeping talent in the Mankato area. What steps would you take to keep talented people in our area and to attract the young? I think to uh, bring uh, more jobs to Mankato, um, high pay, higher paying jobs than uh, that are currently, even though We've got a good economy, 3% uh, unemployment, but to uh, uh, make sure people have an affordable life, I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, to uh, uh, I guess that's all I can say. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Mr. Campbell. I think it's going to be real important for the city to work with the uh, current business owners uh, on their wages. Uh, somehow there needs to be some negotiation, whether it's uh, help from the city to the business owners to maintain uh, a higher wage. Uh, there has to be some discussion there. Um, along with that, the with versus want list uh, of what needs to be done has to consider uh, the younger group that we need to try to attract to the community. So as we're looking at uh, those things that we need to put money toward, uh, that needs to be on the forefront of everybody's mind is we need to try to attract more people to the community. Thank you. Ms. Church. Well, this is one of those questions where I'm not sure how the city can talk to private industry about what kind of wages and benefits that they provide to the workers. Um, I believe our city should be focused on providing safety, fire safety, police safety, good roads, good infrastructure, uh, make it a good place to live. But I'm very cautious about saying the city council should get involved in private industry. Thank you, Ms. Church. Mr. Durand. Thank you. Yeah, I would agree with Barb in that um, we need to make North Mankato a, a wonderful place to be, a great place to be. And I think we can do that with getting some creative, innovative ideas. 
I think we need a younger council to promote those younger ideas. I think that, um, you know, we have the, the Port Authority that is involved in, in, in grants and loans for small business growth and development. I just think that we need to promote a more sort of energetic um, process with that and just try and get people involved. The better our community is in that sense, I think the more we're gonna see the youth stick around and just we can use that and build on that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lyer. This is a question that I can actually speak to, being the token young person. Oh, Chris, you as well. You're very young. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, man. You don't look a day over 30, buddy. <laughs> I meant no offense to anybody up here. Uh, stagnant wages uh, require affordable housing, so that is obviously something that we need to uh, address. But we can address that through a diverse housing stock and diverse transportation options. We have not yet adopted um, a policy that favors Uber and Lyft, which are incredibly popular with my generation. Um, one surefire way to get young people into your town is to invest in your downtown and to invest in mixed-use neighborhoods that promote vibrancy, walkability, and livability. The market will always determine wages, but we can do small incremental steps to make North Mankato livable and awesome that will attract these businesses and consequently the young people that we're looking to get. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we will have rebuttals from Group B and the mayoral candidates, beginning with Mr. Peterson, then Mr. Sandersfeld. Mr. Peterson? Well, again, the city really here, uh, we don't want to get into the business of telling people what they need to do and what they need to pay and all that, but the, it's pretty simple, the things that we can do. Uh, we've got to keep pushing economic development. We've got to work and partner up with the people who want to bring business here, make sure it's a good fit for both parties. Uh, but more importantly, we've got to put our resources to the quality of life projects, uh, the stuff that this, this uh, city needs to bring young people in, uh, to bring the businesses in. The wages will follow. And thanks. Yes, I, I'm, I apologize. I should remind you this 30 second rebuttals. Uh, Mr. Sandersfeld? Yes, I don't believe that uh, the council, that wouldn't be their role to determine, that should be private uh, industry determining that. But we have a wonderful market here of getting talent with South Central, MSU, uh, Bethany, and um, Rasmussen providing a lot of talent out there. And I think they like to stay in this area if the jobs are there. Thank you. Mr. Shearman. I think the only way you can uh, battle stagnant wages is, to, uh, is through competition. Uh, we need to attract new businesses. As new businesses come and jobs come, uh, that competition will, will, will bring uh, higher wages to fruition. Um, so that kind of brings, back, brings us back to the point of economic development. Uh, I think that's something we really need to focus on as a council. Uh, also, we should maintain partnerships with SEC on Taylor um, for jobs. Um, but uh, I, I agree, I don't think we should be dictating any types of wages. Thank you. Mr. Steiner. I think we all agree that it's not the council's uh, business to tell businesses how to pay people, but we should continue to utilize, utilize our industrial park to make it easier for businesses to locate here. And also we have to continue to provide uh, great, maintain our great schools. We have a wonderful school system. Maintain our recreational facilities and parks for families and uh, maintain our high quality of life in general. And that makes it uh, much more attractive to locate here. Thank you. Mr. Whitlock. I think it's the uh, city's job to uh, go out and uh, try to attract the businesses to us. That, I think, is what the, uh, the uh, uh, job of the city is to, uh, uh, through the economic development. Forty years ago, here's a little history. Forty years ago, we had Kraft Food knocked on our doors <clears throat> here in this area. 3M knocked on our door. We told them to go away. We didn't want to have to have people in this town earning more money than what was paying for the Taylor Brett company and that kind of stuff downtown in the, in the uh, retail. Thank you. And now Mr. Hagen. 
All I can say is bigger is not better and more is not better. We need to talk about a quality of life, particularly in the areas of the natural environment that we create for ourselves and the physical environment. So beautification projects, historical projects are things that cause people to want to live in an area. And that's much more important, I think, than in the final analysis for attracting people and simply yeah. saying, let's bring more factories in, more jobs in, which just create need for more infrastructure and more problems. And Mr. Tian. One of the things we are working on is workforce attraction through improving our quality of life, and that's where the local option sales tax is key to our future. The other, one of the other partnerships that the city works in is with Greater Mankato Growth and, the, and their Regional Economic Development Authority, which is partnerships across the entire area. And we are doing workforce matching, looking at what jobs are available and what graduates are coming from the five universities and trying to match up um, those jobs and attract businesses that can use our graduates and attract graduates to the jobs that we have available. Thank you very much. All candidates are now welcome to make a one-minute closing statement. We will begin with Mr. Whitlock and proceed in seating order to Dr. Dion. Thank you very much. Where are we going here in, in North Mankato? I'm a business owner for 30, 31 years in historic and unique, beautiful lore in North Mankato. Let's talk about priorities. North Mankato has a $20 million annual budget. I promise to you that I will listen to all ideas. If you want to cut taxes, tell me the name of the people that are going to be affected by the tax cut. If you want to spend more money, tell me who's going to pay more taxes and what are they going for. I'm open-minded to all of this. The things that we do here in North Mankato define us. I'm proud of what we have accomplished here in North Mankato. My campaign emphasis is controlling spending, keeping taxes as low as possible, developing the North uh, Port industrial area, also enhance pro uh, prosperity of beautiful lower North Mankato. More industrial development, such as manufacturing, keeps the taxes for the homeowners in check. Thank you. I'd like, to, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters of St. Peter for providing this forum. Thanks to everyone for coming. What a great turnout, and it's great to see such uh, uh, interest and care in our wonderful community. We know that there will be one new council member next year, and uh, looking at this group, uh, we're going to have a very qualified person for that seat. Again, I'd like to emphasize that my 20 years of experience and the many accomplishments we've seen during my time, I believe, uh, qualify me for another term. I believe in working together and listening, and I will always try to improve on my, on my listening habits and cooperation with people. As I talk with many residents, the overwhelming attitude that I get from talking with everyone is, this is really a great town, this is a great place to live. And I'd like to keep the city moving forward while maintaining our quality of life and keeping North Mankato a great place to live, and thank you for your support over the years. Thank you. Mr. Shearman. Well, thank you, League of Women Voters. Um, and obviously, this is a great place to live. I mean, we've got 10 to 12 worthy individuals running very hard campaigns um, to, to bring our city uh, prosperity. So um, the things that I'm, I'm mo most concerned about, or not even concerned about, but um, that, that kind of brought me here, uh, obviously, the half percent sales tax. Uh, first, we need to pass the renewal of that tax, um, and then we can decide what we're going to do with it. But um, get educated on that and, and learn what it's about, and, and please uh, vote yes to pass it on November 8th. Uh, second is, is Commerce Drive. I, th I think the revitalization of Commerce Drive is, is very important. Um, it can be key um, to my next point, and which is economic development. Um, so I, I think those are my three most important points. Um, I would like you to elect a candidate like myself who will speak for himself, for the people, think for himself and for the people, and not be afraid to make the unpopular decisions. I'm running for office because I care about North Mankato and its future. I thank you for your support, and I thank you for your vote November 8th. Thank you. Mr. Sandersfeld. I've had a chance to, uh, owning my own businesses, to run the budgets, and I would be uh, just as conscious if I was on the board. I am retired now, and um, so I can spend the time to go through all the issues and, uh, and get it correct, and uh, 
So I'm uh, really thrilled to see so many people here that are all also qualified. Thank you very much. Mr. Peterson. I too would like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Um, I don't have a whole list of accomplishments of things that I've done or helped happen in North Mankato, but I would love to start a list. I'd love to be here in four years uh, convincing you to vote me in again. Um, I think there's a lot of things that need to be done in the town. Um, I would like to continue uh, to raise a family and be proud of this town. And uh, I think it is important that we all really think about the extension of the sales tax. Um, there's a lot of good proj uh, projects that need to be done. Um, we just have to be fiscally smart about how we go about uh, the projects that need to be done. So once again, thank you. Uh, thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Mr. Lyer. Uh, thank you to the... Oh. Am I off? No, okay. Thank you to the League of Women Voters and all the uh, constituents in the audience tonight. Um, I think we have seen tonight that all candidates share a deep passion for the city of North Mankato. I have no doubt that anybody sitting up here would be great choices to fill those two spots that are open. I hope I've convinced you, the voters, that I am qualified, creative, and intelligent enough to serve you. I bring a unique, younger perspective that has an insight into the challenges and opportunities facing the future generations of North Mankato. I believe in fiscal sanity, transparency, and long-term prosperity. If you'd like to know more information, you can visit my website at MatthiasLiber.com, and I hope to have your vote on November 8th. Mr. Duran? Thank you. My platform throughout this campaign has been one of change, and I believe there will be two new council members in November. I believe the council should exhibit more debate and discussion and ask more questions. I think that through greater debate, we gain greater transparency and accountability. With this, we will provide our community with a welcome forum for part participation and responsiveness. It's my goal to promote strong families in our community, to help develop and maintain our parks, to grow local businesses, and to do it with fiscal responsibility so as not to mortgage our future and that of our kids. I look forward to your support on November 8th, and thank you for the opportunity to be your council member. Thank you very much. Ms. Church. Well, first I wanna say that it was never in my whole life on my bucket list to seek any sort of council seat or any kind of political thing, uh, but yet I find myself here today talking to you about doing just that. North Mankato is fortunate that we have a, right, uh, a big choice or a large choice here of can, uh, council candidates uh, for this election. For those of you that are satisfied with the decisions and the directions the city's been taking over the last several years, you have candidates up here who will be closely aligned with your ideas and your visions. Um, those people uh, might be uh, those that have prior service to the community or enter into partnerships with the city. Those who are looking for something different also have candidates. I'm one of those people that's looking for change. I've demonstrated over the last four years a commitment and passion to taking the time to attend these meetings. I, if I elected, I'll continue to work hard for you and listen to your ideas and requests. Thank you. Mr. Campbell. Uh, first, I'd like to clarify a, a statement about the uh, city council getting involved with the businesses and the, and the wage increase. Um, it wasn't my intention to communicate that uh, we would get involved with the wage increase, but it was more over to um, try to figure out how we could make it more accommodating if that was something that needed to happen as far as the uh, businesses that are here to increase wages. Um, what are things that the city could could maybe help provide for those businesses. Uh, in the end, it needs to be uh, new economic development. We were discussing uh, bringing in new talent and retaining new talent. And in order to do that, um, I think we're going to need to be honest with ourselves and, and look at the pay structure um, in this community. Otherwise, um, my interests are um, business and the education system. I like uh, North Mankato 
education system. Uh, so I'd like to continue that. And if this is it for today, I appreciate the opportunity that I've had. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Amundsen. I wish to thank you for this opportunity to uh, share ideas and views. And for me, a learning opportunity. I'm just a common guy who wants to make North Mankato better. Uh, it's a great place to live. I lived here all my life. And I want to be open, transparent, and honest. Thank you. Mr. Hagan. Rather than talk generally <clears throat> about needs for change, as some of the candidates have done, I'm going to be very specific tonight. If you are satisfied with spending a million dollars on a bike trail to nowhere, a half million dollars on a parking lot for businesses who contributed nothing to its building, or if you can agree that we should be giving the city council a $15 million blank check with no clear plan of how it's to be spent, and as well, you believe that a 10% rental cap instead of rental rule enforcement is the best idea, or that forcing the citizens of Rowcrest Drive to pay 60% for their sidewalks, well, the businesses paid nothing for their parking lot, or that treating the citizens' involvement in North Mankato government dismissively, claiming that they were trying to hijack the meetings, and refusing even to discuss citizen initiatives when they come forward, like a design committee for new buildings, or a, force, a good regime for rental properties for enforcement. If you're satisfied with this kind of government, then please don't vote for me. I'm not your candidate. But I want you to remember that in a democracy, you do get the government you do elect. Dr. Dio. All right. Um, I want to thank everyone that came tonight, the moderators and the citizens for coming out and taking um, this opportunity to see what's going on in our community. Our council has worked hard to put in place the pieces that we need to lead the city into the future that they want. We put in place plans, things like our comprehensive land use plan to guide development, our payment replacement plan to take care of our infrastructure, our parks plan to manage all of our, our jewels of the city. We have also worked hard on citizen input throughout those processes, and some people have disagreed with the choices the council has made, but the council has worked hard to come up with the best, the best decision for the most citizens. We continue to strive to do that. And so as we go forward, we will have more opportunities. Mr. Hagen talks about the rental thing. We have a task force in place, and there is an 18-month review on that process. The Trail to Nowhere that he references actually ties into a long-term plan for the river trail that runs from Ortonville to the Twin Cities. There are lots of pieces in here, and if you look at one piece in an individual place, unfortunately, you may have a jaded view. But when you look at the long view for the long term of this community, which in 2020 with the census will be at 16,000 residents, and at the end of 10 years will be at 20,000 residents, you need to have a longer view than the short view that's being talked about tonight. Thank you, Dr. Dean. This concludes tonight's forum. On behalf of the St. Peter Area League of Women Voters, thank you to all of you candidates who gave such wonderful responses, and also to the audience and all who made this forum possible. Anyone interested in the League of Women Voters and its work, please speak to one of our members here tonight, pick up a brochure, or go to our Facebook page. Both men and women are more than welcome. Please remember to vote on November 8th. Your vote does count. Thank you. <laughs>